So in this video, we're going to learn about top-down design for aircraft. That is, design of aircraft assemblies using in-context parts that refer to assembly geometry or surfaces for their shape. So generally the first type of assemblies that we learn to make is bottom-up design. So that would be if we know the general shape of the assembly that we want the end product to be, we design individual parts that are independent from each other, they don't reference each other, but when they're positioned together in an assembly, maybe with the help of assembly geometry, they overall create an assembly shape that, that we want even though their individual shapes are not depending on each other or the assembly. So for instance, the rectangular central portion of this wing here is a bottom-up assembly. So if we take a look at that, we can see that each of the ribs is overall a very similar shape I mean, some of them have slight differences, like different materials, they have different attachments going on. But overall, where they attach to the assembly is just the front spar and aft spar. It's the same size of hole, the same position of hole for each of the ribs. So I can just create the spar independently, these two spars, mate them into position with the ribs. And even for these stringers, let's say I know that I want this stringer to be uh, well, the, the distance between, let's say, that rib and, and this rib over here, let's say I want that to be 10 inches, then I can just mate them into that position and create one of these parts that's well, 10 inches plus eighth of an inch on that side, eighth of an inch on that side, and once I mate it in, it, it's all going to fit together. Even though the parts are independent, they don't reference each other, and the relations between them for the assembly, I can just remember off my head. I can remember this diameter. I can remember the, the distances between these two as I'm creating it and even uh, edit those parts as I bring them in so that they fit, but not have them refer to each other. So that's in contrast with the tapered section of the wing. So if we open that, what we have here so the, the section that's tapering, the ribs are mated in this case onto a wire form plan form, wire frame plan form. So if we go to each of the ribs, so they have a sketch that is pierced onto the plan form and they don't, they aren't constrained in shape until they're pierced onto that assembly level geometry. And also we have assembly level cuts so that even though the, let's say the stringers are coming at an angle, the this cut is at an angle, it would be a little tough to line that all up with each individual part independent, especially when there's, for instance, washout and taper and dihedral but an assembly level cut can make sure that it all lines up. And in this way, each of these ribs depends on the assembly level geometry to constrain their shape. And the way that this one's done, the OML is an end level part, so it's defined by the shape of the ribs, but there also is another approach to top-down design where the ribs are defined by the OML. So this aircraft here is a top-down assembly. So for instance, we can take a look at a, a bottom level part like the frame that uh, attaches the wing roots. And if we open it up, we can see that the part itself 
is using some geometry that comes in from the assembly to define its shape. This unfinished aircraft here is a top-down assembly with multiple levels of information being passed down. Towards the end of this series on top-down design, we're going to take a more in-depth tour of it and design a wing rib for the uh, wing sub-assembly. But for now, let's work a more compact example by recreating a small stock assembly with top-down design.